This lecture is about efficient energy conversion technologies to be used in buildings. The second principle of thermodynamics states that if the aim is to produce heat at about 20 degrees Celsius, which is the comfortable level we want to have in a room, it is far more efficient to lift heat from lower external temperature than to produce heat at a very high temperature and use it at a lower one. Efficient energy conversion technologies are those mainly based on the exploitation of the second principle of thermodynamics, such as refrigerating machines and heat pumps, evaporative coolers and tri generation systems. The refrigeration machine is the basis of the ordinary domestic refrigerator, extracting heat from an insulated box at a low temperature and exchanging it with the surrounding environment at a higher temperature. The same process can be used to extract heat from a room and release it into external air, the ground or a river. In the heat pump mode, the process is simply inverted and heat is extracted from the surrounding environment and transmitted to the building. There are two main types of refrigerating machine, vapor compression and absorption. Vapor compression refrigerating machines use a refrigerant that absorbs and removes heat from the space to be cooled and subsequently reject it elsewhere. Such systems have four components, a compressor, a condenser, a thermal expansion valve and an evaporator. The refrigerant enters the compressor as a vapor and is compressed to a higher pressure and consequent higher temperature. In the condenser, the circulating refrigerant rejects heat from the system and the rejected heat is carried away by either water or air. In the evaporator, heat is subtracted from the environment by the evaporation of the liquid part of the cooled refrigerant mixture. The greater is the temperature difference between condenser and evaporator, the greater is the required pressure difference and consequently more energy is needed to compress the fluid. Compared to vapor compression chiller, the absorption one requires no compressors or other moving parts to operate the thermodynamic cycles, but uses a source of heat in place of the compressor. A refrigerant solution, such as water ammonia, is heated by a heat source in the generator, rising its temperature until it partially vaporizes and flows to the condenser. The remaining concentrated part of the solution flows down in the absorber chamber. In the condenser, the cooling water absorbs the condensation heat from the vaporized part of the solution, changing it into a liquid. The liquid refrigerant flows from the condenser to the evaporator, experiences a drop in pressure and temperature. It is thus sprayed on a heat exchanger, through which the water to be chilled flows before reaching the indoor unit. The efficiency of the absorption machines is dependent on the temperature of the heat source. The higher the temperature, the higher the efficiency of the system. In general, depending on the fluid used to condense the refrigerant, which is the fluid to which the heat is transferred and also the fluid cooled by the internal evaporator coil, there may be four types of heat pumps, air to air, the refrigeration machine directly cools the room air through an evaporator and transfers heat to the external environment by means of an air-cooled condenser. Air to water, the refrigeration machine cools the room air directly and transfers heat to the external environment by means of a water-cooled condenser. Water to water, the refrigeration machine draws heat from the internal water circuit and transfers heat to the external environment by means of a water-cooled condenser. Water to air, the refrigeration machine draws heat from the internal water circuit and transfers heat to the external air by means of an air-cooled condenser. As regard to evaporative cooling, it can be effective in not arid and semi-arid climates where humidity can be very low and temperature high. In direct evaporative coolers, outside air is blown through a water-soaked medium, which is usually cellulose, and cooled by evaporation. The cooled air is circulated by a blower. The air, cooled by 10 to 20 degrees Celsius when it crosses the water socket pad, is then directed into the room and pushes warmer air out through windows. With direct evaporative coolers, 
If outdoor air humidity is not very low, indoor humidity can be too high to be comfortable. This problem can be solved with the indirect evaporate coolers, where a secondary air stream is cooled by water. The cooled secondary air stream goes through a heat exchanger, where it cools the primary air stream. Indirect evaporate cooling doesn't add moisture to the primary air stream. A simple and practical solution to provide heating, cooling and air handling in a room is to use packaged air conditioners. They differ from traditional window air conditioner and split units since they have no outdoor unit or condenser. Instead, the exterior wall must be drilled into small holes or grills, which allow air to flow in or out. Considering their design and their installation, this option offers more energy savings compared to window air conditioners, which require proper sealing around the unit to prevent heat losses. These systems can be used for heating, cooling, ventilation and dehumidification with no external units. Just a condensate drain pipe must be added. Other benefits also include improved aesthetic appearance and noise reduction regarding traditional room air conditioners. With regard to tri-generation or combined heat, cooling and power, it refers to the simultaneous generation of electricity, heating and cooling. The most common technical configuration is made up of a reciprocating engine or a microturbine powering an alternator and an absorption chiller, which is powered by the waste heat from the generator. This system can be interesting where there is a constant need of thermal energy that can be used both for cooling and for producing domestic hot water, and where availability of electricity from the grid is not always guaranteed. In such cases, if the wall system is correctly designed, it can be more efficient in terms of primary energy needs than an air-cooled electric heat pump powered by the grid. In general, it must be also noted that the lower is the efficiency of the national electricity generation, the more the use of tri-generation systems should be considered in preference of the electric chillers. In conclusion, it can be stated that if electricity from the grid is available and or renewable electricity can be easily generated on site, for example from photovoltaic, electric heat pumps are a very good option for heating and cooling. In presence of waste heat or low cost heat sources, absorption chiller can be successfully used, especially if electricity is scarcely available. Both for vapor compression and absorption heat pumps, the presence of a source of groundwater allows to increase the efficiency of the system. Where there is a constant need for thermal energy and where availability of electricity from the grid is not always guaranteed, tri-generation represents an interesting technical solution. Mm -hmm.